everyone, James Mantle here bringing you yet another video. Oh my God, you guys. Now, I've wanted to do this video for such a long time. I'm gonna build you a puppet. That's right. I'm gonna build you a puppet that I do very, very often for my own work. So, I'm gonna show you a preview of what we're gonna do today. Now, I would go through a list of all the stuff you need for this, but I, <laughs> this intro would be so long if I did that. Oh my God. Half of it would just be me like pulling up stuff. I'm not gonna do all that. I'm gonna list it down below and mention it while I go along. So. Let me show you a preview of the puppet I am going to make. First things first, let's grab one of them. This is one I made about, hmm, I feel like I made her maybe about seven years ago and she's still holding up. So that's how you know it's a pretty good recipe for a puppet. I've rebodied this and repainted this a thousand different times. Normally I'm not wearing gloves when I put these things on me. Just shove my hand up her. Oh my God. <laughs> Sounds like some of your guys' Friday nights. And this is the style of puppet I'm gonna show you how to make. This style of puppet was very, very big in the 1960s and 70s amongst puppeteers like Wayland Flowers, and even Jim Henson had a couple puppets like this. It's a hard face with a soft body and rod arms. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make a fabulous puppet like this. And if you like this video, let me know down below and maybe I'll do a few more. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> hey everyone, let's get started. First things first, I'm going to sketch out my idea. Now, I usually try and go for something that I can really easily recreate with clay. And I've gotten very much better and better at like doing stuff with clay and molding. So I'm pretty confident I could do this. So for this video, I'm going to do something a little simpler. We're going to do like a Hanna-Barbera-y kind of cartoony lady, a glamour girl. Now let's start molding her out. I'm taking modeling clay, which I got from Michaels and I got another block of it from Hobby Lobby. It's just your standard gray modeling clay. I don't really recall the name of it, but you'll, you'll, if, you look, if you go there, you'll see it. It's pretty easy to figure out. Yeah, it's just modeling clay that does not dry out. That's important. Like you wanna make sure it's just modeling clay that doesn't harden and stays soft the entire time. And I'm gonna mold that into a giant ball and basically go around the size of my hand where it completely engulfs my hand and I test it underneath to see how big it is and how it's gonna look. Because the bigger the head is, the better it is for wigs. And also if your hand is bigger, you want you know a bigger head. My hands are a bit smaller, so mine are a bit on the smaller side. It's all a matter of preference and taste. Now I'm just molding that down using my fingers, sculpting, sculpting, sculpting away. And just digging my fingers in there, really dragging the clay around to soften it up and get it as round and smooth as possible. That's one thing I'm still working on myself is getting a very, very smooth skull. I haven't quite mastered that technique yet, but I'll get there. And also for the mouth plate, you wanna make a mouth plate as well. It is a smaller block of clay that I just mold into a round shape and usually give like a curve going down for a lip. But it's all up to you and it all really depends on what your you know drawing looks like and what your final result you want it to be. And it's taking a bit more clay, I'm just filling in some gaps and making sure everything is full and everything's nice and round. You don't want any kind of obvious gaps because when you start laying down our paper mache, it's gonna show through the final result. So just be mindful of that. And just sculpt, sculpt, sculpt away. Using my thumbs, I'm digging in grooves to the clay to make, you know, the eyeball sockets. And just smoothing that out and trying to get as much smoothness as possible out of this. Cause I'm on the last stretch before I start doing paper mache. I'm actually really pleased with the way this came out. So just fill in all those gaps and smooth out. And I just pull a little bit of a round circle or piece of clay and just smooth out with my hands and make a nose. All right, everything is looking good. We're gonna start our paper mache. Just last final touches, make sure everything is smooth as possible. That is very, very important. You want smooth. Also, you wanna be mindful of like making sure your design is not too difficult with too many different intricate things because when you have to pull the mold out of the paper mache, it's gonna be very difficult. So be mindful of that. I usually do it with like a blank skull, eyes, nose, and a mouth. Some people do hair and everything, but you also have to be mindful that it's gonna be a lot more difficult to remove from your mold. All right, we have our skull and we have our jaw. Let's start doing our paper mache process. All right, we're gonna start the paper mache process. For the paper, I'm using brown packaging paper. And for the paste, I am using wheat paste from Dick Blake. You can get this online, that's where I got it. You wanna use about two to three scoops of it and get the consistency to about a banana pudding kind of texture. Mine is a bit thick. You can do a little thinner and it'll work just as fine. And also some people recommend you do like a Vaseline seal over your mold to make sure it like leaves easier. But I found that, you know, doing this, that kind of dilutes the formula of the wheat paste. So I just do it dry. I don't really care about doing the Vaseline. It's all up to you. If you feel like you need the extra barrier, then go for it. But I haven't had any trouble removing the clay when I just do it on a, you know, dry canvas. Yeah, and we're just gonna keep molding those. You want those to be like 
moist but not soggy god i hate that word but yeah you want it to be a moist piece of paper and just lay those on in pieces smaller pieces the better um but not too too small otherwise they may not adhere yes tearing is very very important you want to make sure it is torn on the edges and not the solid edge from the like end of the paper because that'll show through on your final result and it's gonna be very weird and obvious when you start painting over it and you may have to do several layers of paint just to cover it up or do wood patch which is another thing you can do to make sure your like stuff is even more solid but i'm gonna skip that step because it's toxic to use and it's a real pain in the ass to like get off your fingers and if i'm just doing a puppet for display i don't really worry about doing the wood patch on it because again i'm not performing with this regularly it's just to be displayed for you know artwork so it does not really matter all right we're gonna do the same thing to the mouth plate and we're gonna move on to our next step we're gonna let this dry overnight you want to do about two to three layers of this to make sure it is nice and solid okay our puppet head is fully dried now it's time to remove the clay i'm just taking an old dessert spoon and just digging through that like i'm digging out ice cream it's really the only way I know how to do this that is not really damaging to the puppet head. I'm being very, very cautious to make sure I don't pull too hard to not tear the puppet head. I'm just going slowly and digging out chunks and chunks of this until I can get to the edges and then drag up those edges. You see like some of it's already starting to come up. And just keep digging and digging until you get enough of it out before you can like start just removing the clay by chunks, which you'll see in just a moment. Yes, just dig, dig, dig in there. Go slow and be careful. Do not puncture the side of your puppet. Otherwise, you're going to have to patch it up again with more paper mache and wait longer before you can paint it. You just want to take your time and make sure you are not rushing. Okay, I've dug out enough of it. Now I can just pull chunks of it out and it should all come out. You see the front section, I just pulled the whole skull out. And using the back end of a bobby pin, the round pip, I'm digging out where the nose is. And then just digging out the same process in a smaller capacity where I dig, dig, dig until I can just pull a huge chunk of it out. Really, really simple. And it's gonna be the same way with the mouth plate. You just go in with your spoon and just dig slowly into it and pull it out. Just chunks at a time, taking your time, not a tight grip, but just dig right in and go around it and take it out. And it should all come out really easily. See, I can only pull all of it out. There you go, nice and hollow. Let's start our painting. Yes, wonderful. Okay, now I'm going to gesso my canvas. I didn't have gesso, so I'm just going to use some white paint and create a white barrier just so the paint adheres better and I don't have to, like, you know, worry about it. I don't know, really know why people gesso stuff, but it's just something I got in the habit of doing from, you know, going to art school. They teach you to gesso things, and honestly, I rarely see a different with the puppets, but I just do it anyway. It's like that nice little step. You want a blank canvas to start with, so just do it. And I'm just going to go through my white paint and make sure that it's all adhered and making sure it is all nice and blank for a canvas. Do the same thing to the mouth plate and we're going to go in with our Folk Art Acrylic Paint. This is in the color Flesh, which is just your standard peachy cartoon pinch. And I'm going to do that on the mouth plate and on the skull as well. We're going to start painting that as well. I'm doing everything, covering it all with Flesh Paint because, I don't know, I'm just going off like the Barbie doll rule where it's a blank, you know, flesh colored canvas before you go in and start. So that's what we're gonna do. And I'm gonna cover that entire skull. And this is just the first layer of paint. We're gonna do several layers of paint on this, guys. Yes, several layers of paint. I know some people that go in like 20 layers of paint. I don't have that kind of time because I only had a few days to do this. So <laughs> if you want to, the more paint you put on, the smoother the puppet will look. Just know that. Be mindful of the fact that if you want a nice smooth surface, you're gonna have to sand it a little bit and just keep going in with layers and layers of paint. In total, I think I did about eight layers of paint, and honestly, I wish I had done like six more because that would have gotten an even smoother surface, but I don't have that much time. All right, now we're going to start doing detail work on the face. This is the fun part. We're putting makeup on now. I'm using watercolor pencils, and I'm going to trace out where I'm going to put all the features. Starting with the mouth plate, I am doing where I want the lips to go and start and end, and how I want the inner mouth to look. And doing the same thing on the mouth, I'm going to draw on some lips and just trace those out and see what I like. And if I don't like it, I'll cover it up with more acrylic paint and it'll be fine. You can just re, you know, start your canvas just like that. And just creating a lip line with my lip liner pencil. All right, and going in with red acrylic paint, I am going to fill those in. Now these apple orchard paints from Walmart are not the best. Like I really love folk art because those are nice and dense. These ones can be a bit liquidy in consistency and take a few coats to really get the nice layer you want. Whereas with folk art, you just get it just like that, you know? So this one, it takes a few times before you have to do it, which takes you a little longer, 
but it's all they had at the Walmart they had locally so I'm working with what I got and doing the same thing with the lips just filling those in getting a nice pouty red lip because this girl is a star she wants to have her you know her name up in lights I'm thinking like a Broadway diva with this kind of look just gonna keep filling those lips in we want her to look just like Tallulah Bankhead yes 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 she is a lady of the stage of the theater Okay, now I'm going to go with my white, and you can't be a lady of the theater without bold, expressive eyes. So we're going to be some big, white saucer eyes. Yes, because she has to be seen from, you know, seats and seats in the back row, you know? Okay, we're just going to fill those in with white, and it could be a little, you know, sloppy because we're going to cover this, round this up with black eyeliner. So you just want to make sure you get the eyes as big and expressive as you want. Okay, now comes time for the eyeliner. I absolutely fell in love with these watercolor pencils. I've been watching a lot of Hexion and like doll channels and they all use these like wonderful watercolor pencils that I never thought to use before. Like it is so clever and it is so useful when you have to trace out detail work on a face, especially with like dolls and puppets. This is so useful. I want to try Mr. Super Clear next to see how that works on a puppet like surface. We're going to fill it in with black acrylic paint because I already traced that out with my watercolor pencils. And just fill that in nice and like that. Um, I'm going to have to do another layer of this black paint because, again, it's the apple orchard stuff and it is not the best stuff. It's kind of patchy. So I'm just going to do our first layer and then let that dry and do our second layer. Okay, while well, that first layer is kind of like, you know, faint, I'm going to go in with my blue eyeshadow next and do the blue eyeshadow over the top and then... When I do my second layer, I'll cover up what I want to do to cover up and clean it up more. So using my Folk Art Blue Paint, this stuff is intense, so I don't have to worry much about it. It'll go on nice and polished, just like that. A nice intense blue lid. We're going to do that on both sides. Nice little circles, very cartoony. And it's okay if it gets on the eyeliner, like I said, because that's the first layer. I'm going to go over it again with the second layer, and that should clean up any you know, missteps. While that dries, though, I'm going to do the mouth plate and paint the inside black. This will be our first layer. We're kind of jumping back and forth, you know, just with our layering. We're doing one layer and letting that dry, but jumping over to another thing and doing that layer. You know, just jumping back and forth. That's how I work. And that seems to be the best process for me. Right here is our second layer of eyeliner. Making her eyes nice and expressive and bold. She wears lots of eyeliner. And I want her to have sort of crazy eyes. So with that black paint, I'm going to make some small cartoony pupils. And that'll be her expressive eyes. Now I'm going to start the eyebrows. This one I always have trouble with no matter what I'm doing. So I'm doing my watercolor pencils and doing faint lines to trace out eyebrows and just see what shape I want to go with. And you'll see that the final result, I didn't even follow this alignment, but I got them out as even as possible as I could. And then, you know, cleaned up my lines and went in with my dark and started doing big, expressive, bold eyebrows. The wig I chose for her is brown, so black eyebrows will suit her perfectly. If she were blonde, you'd want to go with something that's more of like a deep brown or a lighter brown. But for this, we're doing black eyebrows because we want her to have big, expressive, like Eugene Levy eyebrows. And don't mind that. Again, with eyebrows, I always make a few missteps, so that's why you go in with your flush color and you just clean that up. It's like going through with your real eyebrows and doing concealer over it when you draw them on. Those that are drag queens watching know what I'm talking about. And just clean up those lines with the flush. And do several layers if you need to, because sometimes it will show through depending on how dark the color is. Like this one, I had to do it a couple of times to get it as nice and smooth as I like and get that nice sharp eyebrow. But, you know, just keep going through. It's trial and error. They're not going to be as even as possible. Just get them as even as you possibly can. All right, we have finished what I like to call our first round of demo paint. She's gorgeous. All right, now to start her body. I'm going to draw an arm with a hand and four fingers, typical, you know, puppet cartoony style. I'm using a marker and bear in mind how big the puppet is. You want to like make your hands, you know, adjust to the size of your puppet. If it's a smaller puppet, you don't need big giant hands unless, you know, that's part of the character. So for her, I'm just cutting that out, you know, leaving a bias for the seam. And bear in mind, with puppets, it can sort of always be an uphill battle. You want to find that perfect balance of dainty because if you make it too small, it's going to be such a pain in the butt trying to remove this mold, you know, and pull them out inside of each other so you can stuff it. So bear in mind, the smaller the fingers are, usually the fleece inside of it will stuff the fingers for you so you won't have to stuff the fingers. But if it's bigger, you want to make sure the fingers are a manageable, you know, amount because when you try and pull it inside out for the finished product, you're going to have such a hard time doing it. And once both those hands are transferred over to our fleece, we're going to start doing our body. Now I self-measure around my arm to see how much space I want to give myself for a puppet body. And from there, I just go and start my process. I cut out a square. 
And this is gonna be a standard puppet body, a generic puppet body, I call it. And we're gonna do a smaller square for the neck. And make sure it is aligned with the same size as the body because that is very, very important. And just put this all together. I start sewing these all together. I'm using anti-pill fleece. If I did not mention that before, I use anti-pill. I prefer that over polar because I don't really like that really dense furry side. I like anti-pill because it's smooth on both sides. And it dyes a lot easier in my opinion. So, oh, I did dye this fabric myself too. If you can't see, I'm just sewing these all together. Just doing simple seams, straight stitch, nothing fancy. Um, for dyeing the fabric, I used Rit dye, the liquid kind. I don't use the box kind anymore because those leave markings. The liquid dye, I use tangerine and tan, both of those with hot water halfway up. Use the whole containers of Rit dye and just soak the fabric in there for a solid hour. And then rinse it out in someone else's sink so you don't stain yours. And you'll get that nice peachy color, like cartoon peach, you know, fabric. I've been using anti-pill fleece for years now. A lot of puppet makers are like super, super biased and think you need to use Antron fleece. which is like an expensive fleece they use to make carpets and stuff. That's been like long discontinued and all the Muppets are made out of it. It's like a super elitist puppet thing. I've never tried it, but honestly, I've had great results with anti-pill and people don't seem to really care. It's kind of like an elitist puppeteer thing that, you know, whatever. Polar fleece and anti-peel fleece have worked for me and that's just what I stick with. It's cheap, it's readily available, and it dies. So, whatever. Don't fall into those puppeteer trappings. Just make puppets. If you have a passion for it, just start making them no matter what materials you have. You can improve, you know, down the line. Just start creating. That's all that matters. It's kind of like drag. Like, don't worry about what you don't have. Just start doing it. And when I record this, you can tell my hands are super, super stained. <laughs> they are tangerine. And to stuff this, I'm just using your readily available polyfill I got from Walmart and stuffing it in the base of the pan, like the palm, a little bit in the elbow joint for the arm, leaving the elbow joint bare and then the arm, like bicep part to create like, you know, a bendable arm without a whole lot of, you know, stuffing. If you overstuff it, the arm's gonna be impossible to move when you have to start puppeteering it. Use your scissors and cut a small bite into the center of the neck and that's gonna be where our mouth plate goes. All right, time to start attach the arms. I'm using a zigzag stitch to seal up the ends of the arms and I'm going to use a straight stitch to attach them to the body. You could hand stitch this to get a cleaner look but no one's going to see the arms because I'm making a long sleeve dress for this puppet so it's not really going to matter. If it's going to show then you want to take those extra precautions but otherwise the inside of a body of a puppet is often pretty grisly so don't really stress yourself out about that. As long as it functions it's fine. And don't be sloppy. Trim your stray strings after you're done sewing. I always make the mistake too. Make sure you trim your stray strings. All right, now to start doing our mouth plate. Using some regular phone, I'm just cutting that into small squares to make like load-bearing walls for the side of the mouth plate because that's going to be what my thumb goes between. And those are going to be like to keep my thumb in place when I put the mouth plate on. And for the mouth plate, I'm tracing around the front of it and cutting a circle. And we're going to you know, measure that to size and stick that inside of the skull. And we're going to take another block and make a like a handle out of it. And we're gonna like glue those down and use hot glue lots of it and make sure it is attached solidly because that's gonna be what our like hand goes inside to keep our grip okay we're gonna use some hot glue and just put that mouth plate right inside of the mouth and you know seal it up make sure it's nice and solid in there you don't want it to be too loose otherwise it's gonna fall out when you're performing with it and that's that we're gonna start attaching everything do a nice circle of like glue around that and just stick it right onto the little hole we cut for the mouth plate and that's where that goes that's our jaw all right, and we're gonna put that on and stick it on with our head and glue it on. Just put glue all around the sides of it and make sure it's just tightly adhered. And be sure not to like burn yourself because that could really suck. I learned from Paul Lewis from Puppet and Stuff that if you have like a glass of water, it'll quick dry the hot glue so you don't burn yourself. I've been using that technique for years and honestly, it has been a lifesaver. I have so fewer, you know, third degree burns in my fingers because of this. But yeah, just make sure that head is nice and solid and she is just about done. We're going to start doing our black mouth plate pretty soon. Once we are sure that it is adhered nice and solidly, we're going to start draping our black felt fabric over the mouth plate. A lot of people use different kinds of fabric. I use felt because it stretches and it's worked from year for years. Like it hasn't disintegrated over time. Like the way they make felt now, it's completely reliable and sturdy. Plus you can get it for like 30 cents a square, so you can't beat that. All right, we're just going to drape that and make sure it is nice and traced around. And then we are going to do our final touches on it and make sure it is nice and perfectly, you know, even out with the mouth. Cut your ends, trim your edges, make sure it meets up with the mouth plate too. And make sure it also meets up with the jawline. We're just going to start gluing that on. Simple as that. It's all perfectly draped. It should fit right in there. Use your hot glue. Go slow. Don't burn yourself. 
And be careful not to have too much seep out over the edges because it will show and it'll look like your puppet's drooling. Unless that's a look you're going for. You know, go nuts, sis. But yeah, be careful. Don't burn yourself. And make sure everything is adhered properly without any gaps showing. Trim your edges and trim the mouth plate to make sure it's nice and clean. It's simple as that. She's got a big old mouth because she's a Broadway belter. If you want a smaller one, then you just, you know, paper mache down further. It's completely up to taste. I want this to have a nice big old jaw that screams. Okay, if you're following along at home, pat yourself on the back because the hardest part is finished. The puppet is done. We're going to start the fun stuff now and start dressing this girl up. Okay. Once that is nice and solid and you feel like you're really comfortable with that, we're going to start doing our puppet's outfit. Yes! She is looking good. She is cute, girl. All right, let's start doing her dress. All right, I'm using some glitter sequins that I just had laying around. I've had this fabric from Joanne Fabrics forever. I'm going to drape a sleeve. It's just on a fold and cut a long rectangle and cut a like curve at the end for where the sleeve's going to attach to the blouse and just trace that honestly it's super simple to make a sleeve this is like the most basic sleeve in the world and for a puppet it just has to be effective unless it's a super detailed outfit don't really worry about it and we're going to drape this paper over it and create a blouse just like that tracing around where i want the arms to go make sure you do those curves for the armholes and put it on a fold and make sure it's even and we're going to put this back on the fabric to create the top part of our bodice all right put that on a fold for the top and, you know, make sure your fabric is, you know, good. Don't waste all of it. And just cut around that, leaving some seam allowance. I leave about a half inch. There we go. That for the front. Let's do our back. You know, put that right down the opposite side and just trace it and cut it out. Simple as that. Super simple to make a puppet outfit because you don't have to worry about zippers or anything because the puppet body is usually, you know, not solid. So you can just slide it right on. For the skirt, I'm doing sort of like a cape design. I'll put a picture up here to show you what I do. It's on a fold and I just do like a round. It sort of looks like a bullhorn with like the top of it, making sure it is aligned with the same length and width as the bodice on a fold. You'll see, yeah, see, it has to align with that because that's gonna be the skirt. And it'll be like a cape that can drape over her arm to make it look like the dress is hanging down like she's wearing a full gown. It's a really cute technique that I've seen Whalen Flowers do. It's fantastic and works for puppets like this. All right, our fabric is cut. It's time to start sewing this. I'm using just a regular straight stitch and just putting it all together and making sure everything is working. This is a stretch fabric, so it's fine. It works really well for puppet outfits because you can just stretch it right over the puppet. You know, solid fabrics work too. Like I said, the puppet bodies are usually very, very frail and can bend in different shapes. So you don't have to worry about everything. All you have to really worry about is sizing and making sure your arm is not too tight on it, you know? And I'm making sure I hem everything. That's something you should probably do, you know, as a sewer. You want to make sure you hem stuff because it just gives a nice finished look to everything. So that's what I'm doing. I created darts on the front so that she has a nice little breastplate going down. I just put two equal darts on the front to give it a curve for where the breast would go, but she doesn't really have any. It's just to create an illusion with the costume since the fabric is so sturdy. And I'm sewing up the skirt. I'm stopping halfway through the end because you want a slit there for your arm to go on. And once I know where our slit ends, I'm going to hem the bottom of that to make sure it is a nice finished look and it's not just hanging, you know, cut. And our final stage is we're just going to piece all of that together. Connecting everything together, it's really, really simple. Turn things inside out if you have to and just make sure they are all nicely finished. And just like that, that is our simple shell dress that we're going to slip right onto our puppet's body. And like I said, she's got a really like loose body so you can just throw this costume right on it and your arm will fill up the rest. Yes. Okay, now we're going to start what I call our finishing detail paint. Using my watercolor pencils, I got really expired by Hexion and all these doll creators. I'm adding more shades and dimension to her eyeshadow. Just so she doesn't have that full, like, bold Andy Warhol, like, garage door eyeshadow. We want to give her a little bit more dimension. Because it's just a better look in general. Using different shades of blues. I'm doing a little black in the corners to create wings because I can do finer detail work. Because, again, with paintbrushes, I can only do so much. But with these watercolor pencils, it's really fabulous. Giving her nostrils. Adding in more detail. Now we start our wig. I'm using a cheap $2 wig I got from Target during Halloween, like, seven years ago. I bought a bunch of these things. And I'm just going to stuff it up with polyfill to give it a nice beehive so I don't have to tease her hair that much. And just glue it down to her head to make sure I get the nice hype and symmetry that I want. And shape it with hairspray using my brush, got to be glue hairspray, 
different layers of hairspray, just shaping that around and gluing the hair in certain sections I want it to adhere to give her that nice Tracy Turnblad 60s beehive. We want her to look just like Joanne Worley. Yes! And the eyelashes I'm using are actually from Sugar Pill's Summer Collection because they're a little small for my drag face. So I'm using them for a puppet. Look at her. She's cute. She is ready to go. Welcome back. Oh my gosh, let's see what the final result is. Let's do a bit of magic and summon our finished puppet. Ooh, pow, magic. And pow, here she is. Hello, darling. Oh my gosh, I'm in love with her. And I'm in love with you, darling. Give me a kiss. No, not right now. Not right now. Wait till the cameras are off. Please welcome. My name is Ivana Cocktail. This is the final result. This is a great option for those of you who are wanting to dabble in ventriloquy or ventriloquism. Being a ventriloquist person, the guy with the dummies. Yeah, it's a great option for that because it's the hard face, which gives you that illusion. And also, if you want to practice throwing your voice, it's good for that as well. This is in the style of Wayland Flowers, who famously made this kind of puppet, you know, famous. However, it has been used by lots of other puppeteers as well, ranging from Jim Henson to many other gay men with campy puppets. Now, it's absolutely easy to do. It's just very, very time consuming. This took me a total of two and a half days so we'll film do everything and get all the supplies i had to hand dye all the fabric so if you notice my cheeto hands in the videos that's what happened i had to hand dye the fabric a custom color of peach if you want to see how i did that let me know maybe i'll make a video about it and if you want to see me make more puppets let me know down below as well i actually really enjoyed doing this as for my finishing touches, all I did was I created a little bit of a bow here, which I have a video all about that. I'll link it down below. And I added a boa that I just had laying around. Other than that, like her dress is gorgeous with like leftover fabric. And I think she's just missing one more thing, as am I. The Jay's Mansfield Magical Wig Spray from Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab. This Midwest morning after is going to leave my hair smelling just like cream soda. Available at where, darling? BlackPhoenixAlchemyLab.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and please share this video. And if you didn't like this video, be sure and double tap that dislike button. You know, really show you don't like it. Hit it twice. And until next time, bye, darling. <laughs> Click here and watch me expose Trixie Cosmetics, exposing Trixie Mattel, L, L, L. Or see my retro mod inspired makeup using Sugar Pills Endless Summer Collection. Come on, click it. You know you want to. If you don't click it, I'll expose to the world that you're actually the person behind Conspiracy. So click it.